Paul has returned, and with that comes a return of excessive plaid print, and of course, school. Hi guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Gigi, and I make content surrounding hair, school, lifestyle, and vlogs. Without further ado, let's get into it. So, being a biochemistry major, I spent a lot of my time in the Notre Dame de Grasse neighborhood at Concordia's Loyola campus. This campus is mostly for arts and science students and is also where the sports facilities are located. The first mistake that I made was not buying a bundle ticket. I know it seems overpriced at first, but I feel like it was low-key worth it for those who did buy it because there were some events that were exclusive. However, I'm an arts and science student, so I had Froshback, which was basically like a 90s, I guess 90s themed uh, Frosh week. I was so overwhelmed at the time, so even the activities that I could have attended with my non-bundle ticket purchase I didn't attend all of them. The thing that stood out the most about my frost week was probably spending my birthday with a bunch of strangers. My birthday is towards the end of summer and that collided with the orientation slash frost week and I ended up spending it with the basically science society of my school and we had like a little orientation cocktail hour if you will. Orientation was a blur for me. It happened so quickly, there was so much going on but I will say that I did make a bunch of friends in the beginning. I came to orientation with a very open attitude. I'm not really scared to like go to things on my own. I didn't go to university in the same town that I finished high school in. So I kind of expected to not know anyone. We had cookout, we had, we had like scavenger hunts um, around the city. But obviously there was also the partying and everything. All in all, my frost slash orientation was pretty family friendly, pretty PG. <laughs> So a general commentary on the grounds, if I'm not mistaken, there are three residence halls towards the back of the campus. I did not stay in residence, but I did enjoy a couple visits there and there were a few lecture halls in there too. Yep, I know what you're thinking. My favorite part. Let's talk about Books. I did not realize how lucky I was to have classes that started after 11.30 in my first semester. I didn't re- <laughs> I was so privileged. Earliest I could start school was maybe 9.30. I just hadn't experienced like an 8 a.m. People always say do not take 8 a.m.s. I agree, especially, <laughs> especially if you have a choice. If you have a choice to build your own schedule, have the ability to push your classes to at least after 9.00 do that because my 8 a.m.s were very difficult. 10 out of 10 do not recommend 8 a.m. classes. I had my first 8 a.m. in the winter semester. I'm a commuter student so I had to travel at least 40 minutes every day to get to school. You have to manage your time around class, get your assignments done, get some studying done, and get some sleep. Of course like food and leisure in between, but everybody knows fun is for the week. <laughs> It made it very difficult when you're trying to finish your assignments at a good time so that you can get enough rest but then you have to be up by 6 a.m. the next morning if you're gonna make it on time for your 8 a.m. It was a lot. I found myself sleeping more than a few times. I even started bringing coffees to my 8 a.m.s but it did not work out and I would fight it guys, I would fight it and it just did not work. So yeah, just be careful with the way you schedule your classes. Do not put more on your plate than you can handle. I don't think it's healthy. Staring out the window, like I'm literally just going through the motions at this point. I'm sleep deprived. 8 a.m.s were just a nightmare for me. I have one 8 a.m. this semester. Um, it's a philosophy course, but it's a whole nother thing now because it's online. Speaking of online, the first three quarters of my first year classes were obviously in person. I finished it up online and Unpopular opinion, I preferred the online portion. Crazy. The reason I preferred the online portion was because I was able to manage my time to my liking. Yes, you did have scheduled lectures, 
online but it was a little bit different compared to in person when you have to do the traveling between campuses this that and it just feels like more more of a task if that makes sense all in all i did pretty good in my classes i finished the year with a 3.97 gpa that didn't happen by accident i put in a lot of work especially when i realized that you have to be very strategic about your studying if you want to get the best results out of your time and you don't have much time to begin with i didn't have any issues with any of my lectures oh i take that back i did have quite a few questionable lectures no names will be mentioned my advice for that is much as it is their job to teach you and to teach you well you have a certain level of responsibility to teach yourself so if you see that you find yourself in a bad situation you can't just like give up at that point kind of compensate for that try your best self-teach study groups group chats and study groups will be your best friend the thing i learned in uni is that sure you have to shoot for the moon land amongst the stars but some courses a pass is good enough i spent most of my time in the cc building it's the location for the dean's office it has a bunch of classrooms some handy printers for when your assignment is due in five minutes so i would go the basement floor and get like coffee before my 8 a.m. So behind me right now is the bookstop where you can get Concordia merch, textbooks, stationery, overpriced candy, you know, the usual. Yeah, so we check. Oh, I think for the online semester, uh, we're going to have a change of bookstop. So check the Concordia website for that. But yeah, it's no longer the in-person location. Yeah, check the Concordia website. I did not have any trouble with this part because the initial sort of group of friends that I made was through a Facebook group. My school had a Facebook group for incoming students of the 2019-2020 year. I'm a minority student, I'm an international student. If you attend a PWI, which is like a predominantly white institution, um, I don't know if I would classify my school as a PWI because there is a lot of diversity. But particularly being African, I'm definitely a visible minority at my school. So um, I think every minority can relate that when you find yourself in a space where there isn't many of you, you notice each other, right? So in the Facebook group, I was obviously open to making friends with anyone, but obviously also gravitate towards people who are from your same or similar ethnic background because you can relate on a lot of things yeah i met a lot of my first few friends through that group just being open and friendly to anyone who wanted to approach me or to offer help to anyone who needed it don't be afraid to say yes make spontaneous plans like during frosh i met this girl and we made spontaneous plan and we didn't have bundle tickets so we were like let's go to dinner let's have some ramen and it was a good time making friends through classes yes it can turn into like a really good like fun friendship but i think these are definitely more utilitarian friendships you guys are friends because you rely on each other for something there's different types of friends in uni ones you make through classes through notes borrowing through assignments group work whatever it is and there's the ones who um truly know who you are i cherish and value those and i'm really glad that i was able to make those yeah friends were a really big part of my first year and i'm really grateful for that you're bound to click with someone who you have a passion in common with so i would encourage that too one thing that i had to kind of learn you have a lot of acquaintances <laughs> just because you have something in common just because you're in the same circle so not mean they're your friends be very careful but at the same time do not be so uptight life is nothing i think without companionship without friends so be very open be very willing to make those connections another thing i also had to learn is that because you have so many so many short interactions with people very few people in uni actually know 
you and who you are maybe they saw you for like five minutes or one hour at this event or in this class or everyone will know who you truly are and that's okay what version of you exists in people's mind is not really an issue like you should not even worry about that and if you want people to know who you truly are you're gonna have to let that happen naturally through quality friendships you cannot microwave intimacy by like just doing the most you have to be patient you have to nurture these relationships surely you'll make friends okay don't stress about making friends you'll make friends my head in the clouds i don't know where we go i feel like as an international student my experience was a little bit different um you guys will probably have to cross-reference with your own schools but through my school work study was only possible from second year onwards as an international student but outside of campus there is work available for international students i was contemplating whether or not i should talk about this on channel but i think it could help someone so i started work in my second semester and it was part-time very flexible schedule so what my day would look like was say in the morning at 8 30 i have biology lab the lab lasts from like 8 30 up until 11 15. i go quickly and i grab breakfast on campus eat the breakfast while i'm on my way to the bus hop on the bus hop on the train go to work work for about four hours hop on the bus hop on the train back to school and make it in time for like my 6 p.m lecture i did that until the the world kind of closed <laughs> well it was definitely manageable thanks to my flexible work schedule i was able to go throughout the week because my schedule was very flexible but if yours is not that way you can choose saturday sunday working hours i knew a bunch of people who did that just making sure that your work is not getting in the way of your academics i strongly encourage working during school i think it builds character opens your eyes up to the real world you learn the value of money you learn the value of the things you have because you actually have to work for it all in all that just contributes to building character and making you a better person in turn and of course you're graduating with work experience i know some schools have co-op programs mine does you can basically schedule your degree as working and studying terms standard co-op sequence has three work terms so you'll be graduating with a minimum of six months of work experience even if you are taking maximum advantage of the co-op thing you could even graduate with a job in your pocket <laughs> right behind me is the Loyola Chapel, which is the location for the Multi Faith and Spirituality Center. I'm a strong believer in the whole networking mentality throughout life. In whichever space you find yourself in, move with a networking mentality. This is not to say you go around manipulating people because that's a huge no. Be genuine, be open, and present your best self. Present a good character. Be willing to, to go above and beyond, to serve, to show what you can offer. Know what you're about and people will respect you and people will want to invest in whatever it is you're presenting, whatever it is you're going towards. Um, but first you have to know who you are. You have to know what you're about for you to be able to move correctly in certain spaces getting involved so i got involved in a whole lot of stuff in first year like sometimes even like unnecessarily <laughs> i think it definitely contributed to one of many burnouts i don't regret it you know it's first year you just try out a bunch of different things and see what you like i was involved in the african students association i went to a couple events of the haitian students association i was involved in the concordia catholic students association the african caribbean synergetic network something like that but it was basically the careers portion of the african students organizations at my school so learning how to network we would have opportunities to like to be in contact with like big firms and stuff like that have like um, panelists come and inspire us in terms of career building and stuff just events where people get together and eat and like just learn about our continent learn about each other poetry nights we would have nights where we would like discuss world topics which is always good in university always aim to stretch your mind always aim to learn definitely my main goal in first year was learning learning people learning material learning um myself i think that was a pretty good mentality to go in with because it helped me to say yes to the things that i should say yes to hell no 
to the things that would not benefit me, to the things that would take away from my growth, my, my development. To anyone going into university, I'm wishing you the best of luck. Go out there, have a yes attitude. I definitely said yes to a lot of things. I got involved. I'm currently an exec for the Catholic Students Association. Continue to just like be active in the communities that I want to have the most impact in my life and in my future. And at the end of the day in uni, um, your destiny is in your hands. Your decisions, every decision counts. It is only a season of your life, but it is a very impactful season. It is a very formative season. You put your best foot forward always. Have fun and learn, just learn, 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 learn. You're not paying all that money <laughs> not to learn anything. Hope you could pull a few golden nuggets, whatever you want to call it. Um, thank you for watching. I'll see you.